Hey YouTube, this is Jim Nave from Jim Nave Wordworks. Uh, the other day I got a suggestion from one of the guys at Op Lasers on kind of a neat little project to make some necklace pendants. Um, uh, basically like, you know, you've seen dog tags and other things. So they also make some nice, more jewelry quality stainless steel blanks. So um, I went on Amazon and ordered some and did, uh, did a few experiments to see how it would turn out. Uh, these are actually this is doing raster imaging on solid stainless steel. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So these are the blanks I got. They're uh, a little stainless steel uh, blank about right around one inch in diameter with a hole in it. Uh, they're pretty thick, probably 70 thousandths uh, or so um, solid and they're polished to a mirror finish. So they look real nice and then they come with these little uh, necklace clips so you basically squeeze them onto that hole and then you can uh, run a necklace through it so um, I'm gonna try and do some picture rastering on it I've in some of my other videos I've done uh, vector rastering where I've done you know lines or just simple text or graphics but that's a little different because the lasers on continuously and um, burning uh, those lines in there this, I'm going to actually try to do picture rastering where you're scanning across and burning pixels. And the, the goal is to see if we can get a nice high resolution picture on there. So I'm going to use uh, some of my grandkids for the models on these. Um, so I have somebody to give them away to when I'm done. <laughs> um, so let's get into it. All right, the first thing we need to talk about is uh, laser diode damage. Um, these blanks are super shiny you can see here um, it's basically a mirror finish uh, on a stainless steel so stainless steel is anywhere from about 45 percent to about 65 percent absorptive depending on the exact type of stainless steel and the surface finish so the uh, rougher it is the more it will absorb and there you know some some alloys of stainless stainless steel is you know there's there's tons of different versions of it uh, chemistry and uh, that actually matters a quite a bit so um, on the ones that are rough like this sheet here of brushed stainless steel they can be you know absorbing 60 percent pretty easily and the 40 percent is reflected but it's pretty diffuse because this brushed surface isn't uh, you know if you look at it under a microscope it's it's got a lot of valleys of groove so it tends to reflect back in a very diffuse manner so it kind of spreads it out so what gets back straight back up into your diode is uh, pretty pretty weak so there's not much a chance that it's going to damage your laser um, however if you and then the other thing is it, it also depends on how perfectly vertical or perpendicular your laser is with respect to your workpiece so that's um, a little bit of a you know just depending on how well you've mounted it and everything uh, but I was a little concerned with this stainless steel I know of experiments where people have damaged their lasers their diode lasers with highly reflective materials aluminum is especially dangerous because it pretty much reflects a hundred percent of the blue uh, wavelength of a, of a laser diode so you have to be pretty careful with with aluminum um, as pretty much anybody that's tried it knows you even with the most powerful diode lasers you're not going to make any impact on aluminum at all so especially a polished aluminum surface is pretty dangerous so um, what I wanted to do was figure out well how can I make sure I don't have, uh, damage my laser. Um, so the suggestion I got from Op Lasers was just to simply mount um, the laser, or change the, the angle of mounting uh, by about three degrees. So you can see that's what I've done here. Uh, I've got my laser tilted out slightly. Um, they suggested three to four degrees. And what that does is um, essentially uh, the reflection you know that this is coming in at 3.3 degrees approximately and the reflection is going to leave at 3.3 so it's about six 
you know, six and a half, seven degrees off from coming back into the laser uh, straight on. So um, you'll see in some of the video that I shot on, on uh, etching these uh, coupons that there's a lot of light that shows up right on the outside of this nozzle here and even up on my gantry and I don't normally see that and that's because uh, the re that's the reflected light um, coming off on that side uh, which is what we want so that safely keeps any of that energy from coming back in through the lens you're not going to hurt the lens but the diode itself is what can get damaged uh, from this so I would recommend doing this anytime you have a really polished stainless steel surface uh, if you're doing aluminum cards you know like anodized, anodized aluminum etches beautifully with these but once you burn through the anodized surface now you've got something that doesn't absorb you're hitting the aluminum again so this is a really easy thing to do just change the angle slightly and you know to protect your laser it doesn't really change your focus um, if you're using a rod like I use to set your X Y and Z position you might have to change your, uh, your, your offset a little bit um, with that angle. In my case, I don't know if it's easy to tell here, but my, my post is about perfectly aligned, pretty well aligned with my um, nozzle in this direction anyway, so it doesn't really change my point of measurement for that, but, but if yours was forward or back some, you might have to consider that. Um, it also isn't enough to change the characteristics of the spot itself, um, especially especially tilting it out in this direction. Um, on this diode, the beam is longer in this direction than it is in this direction. So tilting it out a little bit has less of an impact than the focus. So I didn't notice any size uh, difference in either the X or the Y uh, beam size when I was characterizing this so it really doesn't impact um, at, um, the the quality it doesn't impact the absorption either really because three or four degrees isn't enough to get close to changing the amount of reflection significantly I'm basically seeing the same uh, when I'm when I'm cutting at this angle I tried it out on some wood and some other things too um, I'm not losing power be, you know because I've got greater reflection um, with this angle. So, like I said, three to four degrees is a good uh, amount to kick out the, the bottom of this, and that you know seems to work well, and it will protect your uh, laser diode. Well, as with anything that you do with lasers, uh, there's a bit of trial and error uh, involved to get going if it's a new material or a new technique. In this case, um, I've never done the regular rastering and so I had to figure out first you know what my pixel size was so I used my standard array here if I can get it to focus um, these uh, arrays here are a series of different lines um, I've showed them at close up under magnification in some of my other videos um, but they're essentially a series of solid lines and uh, lines where there's a pixel, every other pixel, and, and different things. So you can look at these under the microscope and kind of dial in your, uh, figure out what your dots per inch are and do some of your alignment calibration and stuff. So I'm not going to go into that because I covered it in other videos. But just to suffice it to say that your laser is going to have a different pixel size on different materials and when you run different speeds and different powers because that uh, laser dot has a very um, exponential power density across its width. So in this case, I'm burning 100% power and I'm going very slow because I need to trench out in the stainless steel. So um, the dot tends to be a little bit smaller because um, there's only, you know, only the very center of it has enough power to actually ablate the stainless steel off the surface. So I ended up with a pixel size that gives me right around 325 dots per inch, which is very good resolution. Um, this is my using my little 
XT50 op laser and this laser does have enough power density to literally burn the metal off of the surface um, so it leaves a nice very permanent picture in the stainless steel. Okay after I got my ideal pixel size from my uh, t sample tested images that I kind of use for no matter what the image is I always use those same images to dial in the pixel size <clears throat> then you have to usually uh, raster the real image you want to kind of figure out the, the um, fine-tune the lightness and the darkness and things like that so there's a couple of ways that you can adjust the the shading or the the lightness or the darkness and the stainless steel was a little tricky actually because uh, <clears throat> it tended to go from uh, it was hard to get just the right amount of lightness the images seemed to want to be either too light or too dark and so you can adjust that in your image processing software. Uh, I use ImageR. Um, I really like it. It's made for lasers, but there's a lot of other ways uh, or you know, image editing programs you can do that with. The other way you can do it with is your uh, pixel size, your dot, dot per inch uh, <clears throat> resolution. So as I said before, my optimum pixel size for this laser on this stainless steel was about 325 dots per inch. But I could go to 350, 375, or 400 and not really lose any resolution. <clears throat> the, the effect of that is it's basically sl uh, overlapping pixels just slightly. So you can't go drastically higher or you'll just kind of muddy everything up because now the areas that are supposed to be uh, not have pixels in them. So I, I should mention these are dithered images. This is not grayscale. So on something like stainless steel, you really have to use a dithered image, which is um, the image software determines the density of dark pixels it needs to get the grayscale in between. Um, the reason is that intermediate laser powers just won't burn a pixel. So you're, you're either going to get a black pixel or no pixel in this kind of material. So that's why you use dithered. So you can adjust the dithering density for the darkness or and or you can also just uh, pack them in a little bit closer to get it darker. So um, when I went to 350, 375 and 400 dots per inch, I basically got the same resolution image. I mean, it, to the naked eye anyway, obviously, technically it's not quite the same, but I couldn't tell the difference there, but it was too dark. So. I ended up staying at 325 dots per inch and going back in and playing in the image R software to lighten up the image uh, until it looked right on the um, on the stainless steel. So I had to run <clears throat> oh half a dozen or so trial runs on these blanks to kind of dial it in the way I liked it. And um, I'm not going to cover using the image our software they actually have a quite a few videos on youtube themselves on how tutorials how to use the software but basically you're playing with contrast and brightness um and a couple of other <clears throat> settings to to kind of dial it in and like i said the stainless steel is a little tricky i had to make it look lighter on the computer screen uh, because it was uh, than you would normally do because it was actually turning out darker on the on the actual stainless steel so in this case I ended up running settings of 325 dots per inch I was going 10 inches per minute and a hundred percent power this is an example of one that I felt was a little too dark you know there's too much uh, too much of the skin was shaded too dark and uh, uh, you know, it just needed to be lightened up a little bit. So this is where I went back and uh, lightened it up in the image uh, processing software and created a lighter shaded bitmap file to, to burn again. So these are the final um, versions of the blanks that I burned for necklaces. Uh, th like I said before, this the, these were a little tricky to get the shading right. Um, I'm still not perfectly happy with them but you do have to realize that these are only an inch tall and the image itself is about 0.7 inches tall so this is a pretty zoomed in picture um, when you look at them at a distance 
they're very high resolution. So I'm um, this again is the XT50 laser from Ops, Opt Lasers. It's a very fine resolution six watt laser. Um, and if you look at the surface of this under microscope, you'll see that it's not just that the stainless steel is discolored, it's actually uh, ablated away or burned away. Um, so these are, these are completely permanent images that are burned into the stainless steel. Um, they look pretty good. Um, the, the stainless steel blanks are nice. They, they look, you know, they don't look kind of cheesy, like, uh, like an aluminum, uh, plate or something. They're nice and heavy and, and nice and, you know, polished up nicely. So, uh, they look, they look good. And so it was kind of a fun project, uh, to, to do. And maybe, uh, maybe you guys can try it out too. If you want to put your dog's picture on, on your necklace or something like that. Okay, this is uh, gives a little perspective on the physical size of these and what they look like when they're put on a real chain. Um, this is this is kind of a fun little project. It turned out uh, about the about as I expected. I guess they they don't have quite as good a contrast as I was hoping for because the stainless steel is because this is so shiny. You have to get the light just right to see them. Um, and the stainless steel is a you know a darker color so it's hard to get the contrast just right so these show up so it uh well so it takes a bit of trial and error to kind of dial in each picture but in the end it was kind of a cool project uh so i think if if you want to go into the jewelry business or something and customize uh necklaces this is kind of a neat thing you can do with the opt lasers again it takes a laser with a very high power density um, most of the Chinese, in fact, all of them that I know of, don't have either enough power density or a small enough dot size to do this resolution um, of a picture. So most of them can't even make a, a real mark in stainless steel uh, without some kind of Cerakote or something on it. And they certainly don't have the uh, 50 micron beam size uh, either on these. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I always answer the, the comments and questions section in YouTube. So feel free to leave me a message um, or ask a question. Thank you.